Hi everyone. Today we're going to do a quick introduction to how to use glue to create a Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. Now, a Hertzsprung-Russell diagram is a observational astrophysics diagram about a population of stars. It is incredibly useful for interpreting a stellar population, and what we're going to do today is learn how to build one from Gaia data using glue. Now, this is a wonderful observational uh, Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, and what it uh, created from Gaia data, and it's plotting the absolute magnitude of uh, stars in um, the G-band of Gaia on the vertical axis, and then the color index B minus R, BP minus RP, is plotted on the horizontal axis. And you'll notice that there's kind of a weird phenomenon here that the vertical axis goes backwards. So small values are on top and large values are on the bottom. This is a consequence of the magnitude system. So these are luminous stars up here and these are faint stars down here, red stars on the right-hand side, blue stars on the left-hand side. And what we're seeing here is we have a luminosity temperature axis. These are, are being scaled from the observational units to uh, bolometric, or sorry, uh, to stellar units uh, here. So how much light it's giving off and its surface temperature. So that's the um, uh, basic purpose of the hertzsprung russell diagram is that different types of stars fall, uh, show up in different locations. So let's get started here with our observational HRD in glue. We're going to grab those Pleiades results that we had from last time, drag it into the canvas, and it's going to pop right up there. And so then I'm going to go in here and uh, put this as a two-dimensional scatter plot. So I'm going to hit OK for that. And it's going to plot the uh, source ID against some other variable. And what we want to do is actually make a plot of the uh, vote G mean mag. So what vote G mean mag is, is the mean magnitude in the G band uh, of the Gaia data. Uh, and FOT just means it's a photometric measurement. And then on the x-axis, we want to put BP underscore RP. So that's the blue minus red color index. And we get something that sort of looks like a Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. Uh, it's upside down, and but it has some structure to it uh, that we seem to see coming out here. Uh, so what we'll do is we're going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see the full uh, structure. Yeah, something something's happening here that's uh, kind of cool. Uh, so, all right, that uh, gives us a sense of where the... Um, uh, Hertzsprung-Russell diagram is, and the whole point of this is we need to calculate an absolute magnitude. We have the mean magnitude and the parallax embedded in the data, plus a bunch of other stuff that we're you know not as certain of. So we're going to use the parallax of the um, relationship to figure out what the um, uh, absolute magnitude is, and that's going to require a little bit of math. So uh, we need to start out with the distance modulus relation. So abs apparent minus absolute magnitude is 5 log 10 d over 10 parsecs. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale that to 1 parsec using my rules of logs and bring out a minus 5. So that factor of 10 in the denominator comes about as a negative 1 times 5 gives me a negative 5. I'm going to rearrange this to solve for the absolute magnitude. So it's little m minus 5 log d over 1 parsec plus 5. And then I'm going to insert my parallax relationship. Distance over 1 parsec is 1 arc second over parallax plus 5. So I've done my algebra, and now I can use that in glue. So what glue does is it calculates things in terms of arithmetic attributes. And that's this little button up here. So if you don't have a value, but you can calculate it from data in your data set, you use this arithmetic attribute editor. And I'm going to say, I want a new attribute. It's going to ask me, well, what kind of attribute? I'm going to call it the absolute magnitude, absmag. And I want to use that expression. So I want it to be the apparent magnitude 
minus 5 log 10, 1 arc second over the parallax, plus 5. And, but I don't have, like, I don't know exactly how to type that up. But fortunately, this little expression gives me all, or this little win menu gives me all the values. What I want to do is start out with the apparent magnitude. So I'm going to click that, and I'm going to insert that into our, um, uh, into our analysis. And then I'm going to use computer language to uh, re write in this expression. So I'm going to say I want to do minus 5. That's a seven. Five times, um, and I have to type this exactly. NP dot log ten, and then I want one arc second over the parallax plus five. And so inside here, I'm going to do one arc sec over parallax. Uh, now I actually have to get this into a language it understands. It doesn't like the incomplete or invalid syntax. So I'm going to replace that parallax with the attribute parallax. So I'm going to go ahead and insert that there, and it shows up nicely there. And then I have to replace this with the value. Now, what is tricky with Gaia data is that the parallax is specified in milli arc seconds. So if I convert my one arc second in the numerator there, this should be units of a thousand. And so this is what I want. My absolute magnitude is m minus 5 log 10, 1 arc second over the parallax, but parallax is in milli arc seconds, so this is the thousand there, uh, plus 5. Okay, I think that should be everything. And so then it shows up in my list of attributes, and I say, okay. And then what I'm going to do is go down here and select it, absolute magnitude. And so this little smeared out diagram is going to get real sharp. And we have created a Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, but it's upside down. Hmm. All right. Well, uh, in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my limits, and if I want to switch what direction it is on the y-axis, I just hit this little two-arrow button, switch, and I got what I came for. So this is nominally a nice little Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. And I could call this uh, BP minus, I can change my labels, make it clear what these are, make it, you know, a proper um, diagram. Oh, it's fantastic. So everything is put here um, and we see the structure. For those of you who are aficionados of stars, this is the main sequence, white dwarfs, uh, red giants, this is the red clump. We're going to get lots more detail on this in about a chapter or so. Uh, but you'll recall the diagram here has a bunch of stars in it. And if I plot the right ascension and declination of those stars, right ascension, declination, I just got kind of the circular region that I did my query over uh, to get this data out of the archive. It's a bunch of stars that aren't the Pleiades necessarily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that same proper motion selection that we did for last week. I'm going to give me the proper motion in the RA section, proper motion in the deck direction, gives me all these stars. I'm going to zoom in and find the Pleiades. That's this little clump down here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select them. I think I'll just grab a little lasso. So I'll just do a lasso around there. I'll hit enter to select it. Got all my Pleiades here. And then now let's uh, go back and uh, look at our Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. So I can minimize that. And what's really neat about this is that that Pleiades uh, diagram now picks out this really narrow region. This is because the stars in the Pleiades are co-evil. They've all evolved together. And so they, ha they don't have the spread associated with evolution on the uh, main sequence or into the red giant branch that we expect for stellar evolution. So we get this beautiful main sequence here. As I said, we're going to do a lot more details on what this all means. The whole point here is to calculate it yourself uh, create your own hersprung russell diagrams, and then learn how to use the arithmetic attributes here in uh, Glue. So that gets it there. I can uh, shut off this, and then this is the hersprung russell diagram just of the Pleiades, it's, uh, the cluster itself. 
which is, I don't know, that's pretty cool. We, we found a cluster and we measured uh, the properties of the star. So uh, from there, uh, as we skin stellar evolution, we'll learn how to measure the properties of this whole population. All right, uh, that's everything that we wanted to say about this. Thanks for watching.